Hello, welcome back to Char Reads. My name is Charlotte and today I'm going to be talking about A Close in Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is the sequel, well not really a sequel, it's in the same world, in the same universe, um, as The Long Way to a Small Ivory Planet, which is the first in the Wayfarer series. This is the second, there are now four. A Close in Common Orbit alternates between two storylines, uh, characters that were very tangential in the first book. The first is Lovelace who gives herself the new name of Sidra. This is the AI that we saw at the end of the first book um, that got put into a bodysuit and sent away from the ship. Sidra has been taken in by Pepper, who is a mechanic friend of the crew from the Wayfarer and her partner Blue, and they live on Port Coriol, which is the big market planet. So throughout the book, we're seeing Sidra trying to understand what it is to be in a human form when she was made as a ship AI. She's so used to being plugged into the linkings, having all information available at her fingertips and having so much input from different areas of the ship. But living as a human in this body is so disorienting to her because she still has all of the capabilities that she had as a machine AI. She still has vast processing power, but she doesn't have that constant access to the linkings. She only has, you know, the two eyes to see from. So for example, she feels a lot more comfortable being in the corner of a room where she can see everything that's going on. And she doesn't really like being out in public bright spaces because there is just too much going on. I think the joy of this storyline is that it really shows you both like the limitations of being in a human body and also what's so magnificent about it. Pepper, my memory banks are filling up. I'm not like you. I don't have a brain that grows new folds and synapses whenever I learn something. You, you have an almost infinite capacity to learn things. I don't. Anytime I learn someone's name, anytime I'm taught a new skill, I'm going to have to pick and choose which of my memories to keep. I'm going to have to tear pieces of myself out, which is both extremely tragic and an obvious consequence of living as a machine. The book doesn't go too heavily into like whether AI are humans because it shows so immediately that yes, of course they have the same uh, like emotional abilities, but equally being in a body mod is an illegal housing and if they were found out, she would be deactivated, effectively killed. So by law, she doesn't count as a sentient being, um, but obviously has such capacity to relate to other people, to learn, to engage. Seeing her develop and adjust to her new surroundings throughout the book and like finding the ways that work best for her and also like making friends and stuff is actually just very uplifting and sweet even though it has this like quite macabre backdrop. The story that it alternates with is actually Pepper's story but Pepper from her childhood. She was born as Jane 23, a genetically modified hairless girl that they used to breed in groups to work in factories. Every age group has its own name, so Jane lives with, I think, 80-ish other Janes. All she knows is inside of this factory, sorting scrap with the other Janes, and there, there are these mothers which are robots um, who keep them in line, but also, you know, feed them and, and take care of them. One day there is an explosion in the sorting room and it blasts a hole in the wall. And for the first time, Jane 23 sees outdoors. She's so confused and intrigued by, by what it is that she sneaks back there um, during the night to investigate and ends up outside of the factory. The mothers can't follow her, so she just runs and all she sees is mountains of scrap in every direction. And it's dark and she doesn't know what she's doing. She thinks maybe I should go back, but the mothers saw me and they're gonna punish me. And I don't know what I'm in for because this is obviously something really bad that I've done. And then she hears a voice from nearby telling her to come over here and shelter where this voice came from. And the voice turns out to be a ship AI called Owl. The ship had crashed on this planet that is hard half extremely affluent and then half just full of these scrapyards um, and all of the people within the ship had died. So Owl had just been sitting there for the last decade on her own. She takes Jane 23 in, uh, gives her shelter and what, what little water and food supplies she had left. And um, between them, they come up with a plan for Jane to survive by hunting dogs and also to repair the ship with all of this knowledge that she's accumulated in the factories and the endless scrap that surrounds them. Between the ages of 10 and 19, she manages to like scavenge and repair all of the things needed to get the ship up and running again and she eventually escapes the planet. Is that a spoiler considering you see her in later life, like surviving not on that planet, maybe? <laughs> so these two storylines are actually really quite different. Um, Citrus is all about how we treat um, other people and how we relate to each other and it's deeply empathetic. Uh, but Pepper's storyline was actually just really fun and exciting. I found myself just like wanting to get to the Pepper bits because 
it was way more kind of like adventurous and high stakes than Sidra, who was obviously in a quite sheltered situation, despite this threat of like, if she was found out. I actually decided to read this book um, after I posted a review of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and said, I don't think I'm gonna read any more of them because I liked it, but I didn't like, I wasn't entirely drawn into it. Um, I didn't feel like I had to read on to find out what else was in this world. Uh, but then a few people in the comments were like, the second one is way better. Like you should definitely read the second one. I loved it. And just people bonding over loving the second one. And I think I did prefer the second one. The writing definitely felt more mature. Um, and it was a more kind of refined story, just focusing in on a few of the themes that came up in the first book. Um, again, do I want to read the third one? I'm not sure. I now have such a strong association of the first one being at the start of like mega lockdown and it being really hot. And I just made my little outdoor space here nice. I put down some like fake grass and I read this all while lying on my grass um, one weekend. And uh, I really like the idea of coming back to these kind of books when I want to be happy and relax, even though they're not particularly happy books. There's, there's a definite sort of like hopefulness um, in humanity in all of them, which I find very uplifting. So I think I may come back to the third one the next time I feel like I need that sort of lift and I know that Becky Chambers will provide it for me. <laughs> Have you read any books in the Wayfarer series? Did you enjoy them? Please leave your comments down below. I look forward to reading them and I'll see you in another one soon. Bye. Hello, welcome back to Char Reads. My name is Charlotte and today we're going to be talking about a closed comment orbit. <laughs>